This is an $800 manual transmission Volvo V70 that I bought sight unseen off of Facebook Marketplace. And on my new YouTube channel here, I'm gonna be making a video series replacing the blown engine in this car and trying to turn this car into a perfect daily driver that I can take on photography road trips. I personally just love these cars. I love that it's a wagon so you can fit a ton of stuff in it or camp in it. I think they look amazing. I love the five cylinder engine. This one specifically has a manual transmission which is super rare in North America. And because of that, I think it's absolutely gonna be worth saving and it's gonna make a perfect road tripping car. This one in particular also has some really funky features like a fold out third row seat and no sunroof, which is a big deal if you're a little taller like me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Willem Verbeek. I'm a photographer based in Los Angeles. And for the past five years, I've been doing a YouTube channel all about photography. I am by no means an experienced mechanic. I really don't know much about working on cars, but it's just something I've always wanted to learn. It's something I've always wanted to be confident in. And with this channel, I just wanna document my experience of learning to work on different projects. So I also wanna talk about why I picked the 2.4 non-turbo over any of the turbo cars that Volvo makes. Number one, it's because I have a turbo S60R sitting right there and I've seen how much of a maintenance nightmare this thing has been for me, even after just a couple thousand miles. So I really wanted the non-turbo with a manual five-speed purely because it's the simplest mechanical drivetrain that Volvo made in this generation of cars. So I think for the sake of simplicity, being able to fix this thing and keeping it for a long time, just having the simplest drivetrain is going to be a big advantage. And that's why I went with this exact car. So although it seems like a lot of money to pay, I think this car will be worth saving and it's a perfect opportunity for me to learn how to work on cars without the consequences of destroying the one car that I have to get around on a daily basis. Although this car was already diagnosed by a professional as needing a new engine, I did want to take a look for myself to see if I could find any evidence of some damage to the motor. So the first thing I did was I removed all the spark plugs to inspect them and then ran a compression test. Unfortunately, cylinder number four was down on compression. Interestingly though, this wasn't the reason that I was told this car needed a replacement engine, so I jacked up the car and drained the oil to inspect it. Let's see how much of a mess I can make. Out of the engine came some very dark and metallic looking oil. It really smelled awful. It smelled quite burnt. Oh dear God. I bought this car knowing that it needed an engine replacement, so it's not something I'm upset about. To be honest, pulling an engine out of a car is something I've always wanted to do, and I think this will be the perfect learning opportunity for me to try it out. Between those things and some other major red flags like this engine being down two quarts on oil, I think it's pretty safe to say I need to pull this motor out. I'm not gonna waste any time, I'm just gonna get right to it and give it a shot. I'm nervous, but I think it's time to finally remove this engine. I don't really have a game plan. The coils and plugs are already out. I'm gonna remove airbox, exhaust, electrical stuff, accessories, motor mounts, and then hopefully this thing will come out. I'm very thankful to have my buddy Hector who was kind enough to help out today because I'm gonna need all the help I can get with this project. I did so much research prior to attempting this about this engine specifically, but also just about 
how all this works in general. I was super nervous going into it, but as I started just pulling things off, I was surprised by the simplicity of this five cylinder naturally aspirated engine. It's just air, fuel, exhaust, electrical things, coolant, you pull it all off. And I was surprised at how quickly I was making progress with this. Whether I can actually get it back together or not though, will be a different question. We removed this axle nut like 30 seconds ago and it was just completely loose in there, which is crazy. Outside of the engine bay, I'm taking apart some of the suspension components so that I can remove the axles out of the transmission. My plan is for the transmission to come out of the car attached to the engine because I think it'll be a lot easier to separate the transmission from the engine outside of the car and also change out some of the seals and things inside the transmission. As I'm pulling all of these things off, I'm realizing how big of a project I'm getting myself into here. Yes, the engine is bad and has 160,000 miles, but I did not think going into this about every other part in this car that also has 160,000 miles on it. Let's go. Nice. That being said, I'm totally up for the challenge and I think this is just another perfect opportunity to learn more about this car. Oh. While I was in here, I noticed that the brake lines had some really big cracks in them, so it's gonna be good to replace things like this going forward. As I'm pulling off more and more suspension components, I'm realizing pretty much every bushing in the suspension system is completely shot, which is to be expected at 160,000 miles. I wanna drive this car for quite some time, so I'll be replacing all of these things with new bushings once it's all going back together. That's Volvo for we you. We did it. <laughs> That's Volvo for you. Sick, dude. At this point, everything we can see is disconnected from the engine, so we wheel in the engine crane and very slowly start to bring it up. Just to give you an idea, this is the point we're at in this build, is where you gotta do this to get to a bolt. <laughs> Never buy a Volvo. <laughs> Dude, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Never ever get a Volvo. There's a lot of things that I would do different already looking back at this footage. I probably would remove the bumper, radiator, and probably start with the car a little bit lower since we're working with very limited ceiling clearance here. But considering the fact that just a few hours ago, I thought I would end this day by maybe finishing draining the coolant, I think we're making some pretty good progress. What a feeling, dude. So there it is, so stoked with how this day went. The engine is out and it's looking good, but this is just the very beginning of this project. In the next episode, I get a brand new engine ready for this car.